There are lots of sandwiches in Pret that are over 500 calories. You yeah. will never, ever leave a quarter of a sandwich behind. Mm -hmm. You will be licking out mm -hmm. every single last mm -hmm. crumb. And that's because it's d been designed. So if you're struggling with the food, the sort of strap line of the book is, it isn't you, it's the food. So how does it do it? What's the yeah. mechanism? We actually understand quite a lot about how the food does this. And mm -hmm. we've got really good studies going back to the 90s that when food is soft and when it's energy dense, mm -hmm. that those are two really important properties to drive excess consumption. So ultra processed food, simply because it has been so physically mangled, chemically, thermally and physically, it's been actually processed very small particle size. Um, this this sandwich feels like it's got a bit of texture, but I, you can compare this to if you made this with rye bread mm. and chunks of tuna and bigger bits of cucumber, you know, it'd take you twice as long to eat. That's a good point, actually. The, the energy density is mm. partly because the food is dry. Now, there is some illusions of moisture in a lot of the products that comes from uh, using using sugars and oils, but it's generally bone dry because water is expensive to ship around mm -hmm. and um, uh, water reduces shelf life. So mm -hmm. what you want is very, very dry food. So the food has a nearly infinite shelf life. Mm -hmm. What you want is to be able to make your um, uh, mince pie, say in February, for next Christmas, because it's going to take the factory a long time to make, you know, the mm -hmm. 20 million that you need to produce. So... The energy density and the softness mean you consume calories, just you swallow them at a rate that your body has not evolved to keep up with. Real food, even a fatty marbled steak, A, you have to cut it and chew it, and B, steaks are full of water. They're actually quite low energy density, even mm -hmm. if they're very fatty. So um, the second thing is... Uh, uh, think the food tells you a series of lies. Mm. So whether it's the non-nutritive sweeteners or the flavor enhancers or the gums replacing the fat, there are lots of things that uh, signals arrive in your mouth that then the nutrition doesn't deliver. So we understand this best with the, the artificial sweeteners or the non-nutritive sweeteners. It doesn't matter if they're natural. You don't taste sweet in your mouth, right? You don't have sweet detectors on your tongue because it's fun. Yeah. You have it to signal to the inside of your body organs like your pancreas, that refined sugar is on its way. And mm -hmm. so you better release insulin and other hormones to deal with the refined sugar. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have a sweet taste, because humans are quite good at eating sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you put sweet taste on the tongue and the sugar never arrives, we used to think that would then boost your insulin, lower your blood sugar, and then you'd, you'd eat more sugar elsewhere. So if mm -hmm. you're drinking a diet cola, you'd eat more fries. Mm -hmm. It seems from a really big paper published last summer, most of the artificial sweeteners put your blood sugar up. So we think this is part of a stress response. If, you're, if you put sweet on the tongue and the sugar never arrives, this is incredibly confusing for your body. For millions of years, if you put sweet, sweet taste on the tongue, sugar then arrives in the body, honey or, or, or whatever. So... Um, the lies seem to be important. Mm. Uh, flavoring, coloring, marketing is a big part Huge. of excess consumption. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much about any one of the ingredients or properties. It's the, the whole gestalt, the entire, um, ev every single aspect of the food has been optimized. So you can't really tease it apart. It's like going, you know, why are we all addicted to our phones? Is it are you addicted to your phone because of its camera or it's the apps or is it the sleek feel or the buttons or the swipey? It's the ping of a it's, message, what, the dopamine hit right, that you get. Like, but it's all of it, isn't yeah. it? It's every aspect mm. is just designed from the acoustic of the ping to your relationship with the brand. So you can't tease it apart. And mm -hmm. that, that's a really important thing for understanding why you can't really reformulate ultra processed food. Mm. So we, we see this, the best example is with a Diet Cola. I mean, Diet Cola is like the ultimate solution, isn't it? It's, it's a perfect fix. They're basically indistinguishable, zero calories. Why aren't diet drinks solving at least the proportion of the obesity epidemic that's due to soft drinks? They're just not. And we've massively increased our consumption. The non-nutritive sweeteners are probably a bit better than sugar. I mean, mm. You know, my colleagues who I really trust w would all say that. I, I'm I'm a bit on the fence about it, but they're probably not much worse. Mm -hmm. um, and yet they, they really aren't solving the problem. So even the best reformulation doesn't doesn't work. That's why we we think that to change population health, we have to switch people away from an industrial diet back to sort of eating real food, traditional food. What's really important for people listening who live at what we in a horrible way, call a healthy weight, 
is if you're eating a diet high in ultra processed foods, even if you don't gain weight, you're still exposed to all the increased risks of dementia, anxiety, depression, Mm -hmm. inflammatory bowel disease, and on and on and on. So Mm -hmm. it's this is not a discussion that's about weight. And I think wresting diet related disease away from an obesity discussion is is really important. And you do that very, very kind of skillfully. 